blow whale. I have only one shot because after maybe she will leave, but if I do it, the footage will be amazing. Baby coming, mama, no. And the rover was like, just bring human being, dead. I am the first being here. My company is named Blackwell Pictures. Now we are using new technology and tools to film above water at sea levels and underwater with this kind of ROV. And our purpose is what can we discover, what can, what can be achieved when you have such a piece of technology with animals or diving in the abyss. First, when you are using the Luna to film underwater, you, the pilot and cameraman, are not underwater. You are safely in a boat, breathing air, so you can focus only on your camera and not at checking your air or everything else. It's pretty convenient to have like three presets on your camera, like panic button, <laughs> like autofocus, uh, shutter priority and everything, you're just driving and recording. Between full manual setting and this panic button, you can have some, okay, I will do manually the focus, but I want to have like uh, just shutter priority because I want to fix my shutter and ISO, but I want to be able to move with uh, natural light. It don't bother me to change the aperture every time. And then you have the perfect situation. Oh, you have the time, everything is under control. For example, you are too deep to have the sun light or something like this. So you can tweak your setting really exactly the way you want. And then after, the difference between two footage with the same camera and the same robot will come from the cameraman. It's always, always a question of compromise. It's very dark. Uh, do I cramp the ISO with a opening focal, but it will be a little less blurry. The final words comes to the cameraman choice. And what you can achieve with the Luna because you have control on everything on the camera. That means you can achieve whatever you want. And then the small artist in every cameraman can speak. never know if the encounter will do last 10 seconds or 10 hours. So a lot of things come in mind and okay, do I do the safety shot first? But if I have only two minutes with the whale, ha, ah, safety shot is just so boring. Everyone has safety shot. Or do I'm going and do a close up with a nice aperture, but I have only one shot because after maybe she will leave. But if I do it, the footage will be amazing. There is no good answers. You have to follow your instance and you have to know perfectly how your gear is working. You have to know perfectly your technique because after it just instantly reacts in with animals. One time I had a walrus encounter. We make a very slow approach so the animals be used to the noise, the presence, the size, everything. It was like 10 to 15 walrus on a small ice pack and then there is one baby and the baby wants absolutely to come to see the world. It's quite like, and the mother doesn't want. So you can see, because I have all the footage in one shot, you can see baby coming, mama, no. Get back to the ice pack. Two times, three times, four times, the fourth time, she put the baby back on the ice pack and then come like through me like a torpedo and bang, get away, please. <laughs> You're raining my education right now. <laughs> if it was a human being instead of the world, could be dead. Our risk can be up to two towns and four or five meters, 40 kilometers per hour on the water, just like this. And the rover like just bring. Okay, okay, let's 
I'm, I'm going now, I'm leaving. So it was a mix of false fear, because no risk for us, but still you are so into your footage, into your focus, when it's a little bit like you are in the water. And then of excitation and of, okay, I understand your message and I'm leaving right now. Okay, how can we prevent like an animals to entangle into the tether line without a lot of different solutions? But by the end, you can see how the animals are very aware of the tether line. Even like an unpack whale, size of a bus, just know exactly where is the tether line and will not entangle in it. After a lot of diving with animals, different animals, and a lot of talking with special scientists, right now for me, the only fear I still have uh, will be with the young sperm whale because they got very exciting and you don't want to untangle in the tether line because the first reflex is to turn if they are untangled on something. Spare kits, very important and you can order from Vera. <laughs> and then after you have to think of what I want to do. That first I'm going very deep or I'm going into shallow water with animals or under ice or maybe I want to have add some uh, stuff on the aerovail, like small harm, so he can like land on the ground and waiting for the animal for hours. You have a big robot choice, a professional one, that you can plug a lot of different stuff. And of course, uh, most common is, okay, what will be the weather? If I am in an open boat in Tahiti, I will need something to cover my control station, so I can be in the shadow, have good, good brightness on the screen and everything. If I'm going like uh, in Arctic, it will be very cold or maybe a lot of uh, rain or snow. You want to be a little bit protected just for your own comfort. What kind of stuff can I bring to protect me a little bit? Like uh, half tents whose fish are used. You can put on a boat, you can always speak with the captain and everybody easily behind, but you are well protected from the sun or the wind or the rain. So this kind of stuff is just to protect you a little bit and protect the gear a little bit so you can do your job for hours because you are going to die for hours, so be ready. Sometimes you will want to add more stuff on your tether rail. For example, when I went with the Beluga, we didn't know what will happen. So by security, since the first dive, we say, okay, we just tape a marine rope, like a six or eight millimeters marine rope, along the tether line for like 20 to 30 meters. Then you, you make a note on your boat with the marine rope, and then you have the tether line. So if the beluga whale takes the rope in his mouth and play with it, it will not make the tension on your optical fiber, but on the marine rope. And at the end, it just drags the boat, but not your tether reel and everything. Always close your eyes and say, okay, I will be underwater, maybe with animals, maybe with current, what's the critical part? My tether line and my control station. Because the, the rope is just waterproof, underwater is easy. But the tether line and the control station, and you, you have to think about it. I will push anyone with already maybe a little bit skilled with aerial drone or crane operators. So learning new gear is fun for this kind of people. Go for your ROV because not a lot of people are on this market. And uh, I think it will blow in the following years because what we did in the past years was incredible. Like people tell me, nah, it's not real footage, this is CGI. No, no, look at the behind the scene. Look, this is real footage. Now they're like, what? Can you imagine a documentary without a drone? Not really. And I think it will be the same thing with the Aerovay in the following years. <laughs>